This is Roos and his leeches part two. In part one, we talked about Roos using leeches because he's health conscientious or because he has hemochromatosis. For this video, we're gonna go full tinfoil and give another explanation for Roos and his bloodletting practices. He's an other. See why I had to do health nut version for part one? You can't go full tinfoil in part one and then go to genetics in part two. So adjust your tinfoil hat and let's explore this theory. This theory is commonly called bolt on and I'm sure most of you have heard it by now. But let's start at the beginning. In the books, Old Man tells a story about the Night's King. In the story, a member of the Night's Watch falls in love with an other woman, has sex with her, and gives up his soul. It is unknown if the member of the Night's Watch was a Bolton, a Stark, or from some other house. Old Man has a surprisingly high level of accuracy in her stories. A scary level. So what if the Night's King story is true? What if the Night's King was a Bolton? And what if the Night's King and the other woman had a child? a half-human child. This child then grew up to be an adult and then stopped aging. Perhaps having other blood in him made him immortal. How would this half-human fit in if he never ages? By flaying people, perhaps his own kin or children, and taking their faces. His persona would have to die every once in a while to avoid suspicion. You can only go so long without wrinkles and signs of aging before people start to think something is amiss. How would this human-other hybrid learn this ability? There are two main options. One, the faceless men of Bravos. We know the faceless men are able to remove people's faces and in using their own blood, wear their faces as disguises. The Dreadfort is relatively close to Bravos, and this creature could have learned their secrets. Learning this ability would make sense if the creature is desperate to find a way to blend in while remaining in the north. Quick trip to Bravos, learn some blood magic, and then sail home. Alternatively, we know the Boltons have been flaying people for a very long time. The Boltons are said to wear the skins of their enemies as cloaks. It wouldn't be surprising if the creature, or with his offspring, discovered that flaying people and wearing their skin, along with some blood magic, could disguise them. Because really, there being others that can use a similar ability as the Faceless Men isn't that out there. The North also has a lot of supernatural elements compared to the rest of Westeros. Wargs, others, children of the forest. Face Changers fits right in, especially against their enemies, Starks, the Warg Skin Changers. So how does Roose Bolton fit into this half-human, half-other, immortal creature that takes other skin to avoid suspicion? Well, this theory believes that Roose is that creature. There are some details about Roose that definitely seem odd or otherish. First, he's described as having very, very pale flesh and eyes. Abnormally pale eyes. Eyes like ice. The others are described as being pale as the moon and having cold blue eyes burning like ice. And while their eyes don't match 100%, Roos' eyes could actually be dimmed down a little bit by only having half other blood. Also, unique eye color in the series has been connected with being different or having abilities, and George certainly lets us know Roos' eyes are unique. Even his face is described as a pale gray mask. Pale gray mask because he takes the faces of his offspring? There's also an agelessness about Roos. Though he is over 40, he doesn't have a single wrinkle or a line to tell the passage of time. How many people have you met over the age of 40 that have zero wrinkles? Roos is described as quiet, calm, with a stillness about him. On Roos's face, rage and joy look much the same. If you had lived for centuries, you'd probably be zen-like as well. Not much rattles you or invokes an overly emotional response. That doesn't mean you're 100% stripped of emotion, but Lady Dustin does describe Roos in a very creepy way. He does not love, he does not hate, he does not grieve. This is a game to him, mildly diverting. Some men hunt, some men hawk, some tumble dice. Roos plays with men. You, me, these frays, Lord Manderly, his plump new wife, even his bastard. We are but his playthings. A man that's been alive for centuries may have a lack of passions like Roos. It is easy to be above emotions when you realize how pointless most of it is. And what amuses mortals? Hunting, hawking, dice probably wouldn't amuse an immortal. He's been there, he's done that. What is probably amusing is playing with people. People are wild cards. We have patterns, yes, but we're also very fluid and can be surprising. This could be the only thing Roos has left to truly entertain himself. Being extremely old could also explain his lack of caring about killing the miller raping the miller's wife under the swinging corpse, and then complaining that her vagina wasn't worth the rope, and him casually talking about his future children being killed by his bastard son and remarking how Walda will grieve, but not himself. That is super dark and uncaring. 
kind of sounds like a man that has lived so long he doesn't care about life or what happens to simple mortals. Speaking of Roos and practicing Lord's Rite of First Night, if he's been around for a long time, it would make sense he would want to keep old customs even after they're abolished. <laughs> they want me to change my ways? Roos being immortal would also help explain how the Boltons survived even though they rebelled against House Stark numerous times. How Stark even extinguished one of their own cadet branches while leaving the Boltons alive. Why? Maybe because the Boltons had a very old, very clever man leading them and talking their way out of it. Hard to kill an immortal. Okay, Roos is half other and doesn't age. He's getting older, people notice he doesn't have any wrinkles or signs of aging. Roos realizes he's running out of time and needs to make the switch soon. Problem? He has unique eyes. He can't take just anyone's face as they would notice the sudden dramatic eye color change. He also wants to take a Bolton's face so he can retain his power and home he's had for centuries. If Roos really is this human other hybrid, this could explain Domeric's death and Roos keeping Ramsay around. Maybe Domeric didn't have those eyes, where we know Ramsay's eyes are very similar to Roos's. Did Roos kill Domeric when he realized his eyes weren't going to match his and it wouldn't work? We know he blames Ramsay, but that could be a cover. Poison doesn't really seem to be Ramsay's style. Maybe this explains all the infants dying in the cradle and why he tolerates all of Ramsay's shenanigans. Because he needs him. Ramsay being around doesn't make a lot of sense. Ramsay isn't good for Roos's image, and if Ramsay killed Domeric, why would he allow Ramsay to live? Roos says he doesn't kill Ramsay for killing Domeric because of kinslaying, but we've seen Roos not give a piss about slaying his liege lord, raping a woman under her dead husband's swaying corpse, or doing some other particularly cruel things. Does this sound like a man with morals that would keep him from killing the man that murdered his heir? And if he's so worried about having an heir, why would he allow Ramsay to kill his future offspring? Why is Roos so convinced he won't live long enough to see the boys to manhood? Does he really think he doesn't have another few decades? Roos seems perfectly healthy. It sounds suspicious. Sounds like he found a suitable body to switch with and knows he doesn't have another 15 plus years of looking the same age to raise another heir up to the age where he can then take his face. Another interesting detail is how quietly Roos talks. Is this part of the ruse to help him make a transition to another body easier? His whispery voice is unique. He takes Ramsay's appearance, or someone else's, and then uses a different voice, a louder voice, a deeper voice. Maybe when he switches bodies, he also switches around servants or guards, making sure people forget about his voice before rotating again. That way no set of servants or guards gets used to his new voice and his new body. So, this video was titled Roos and his leeches part 2. How do leeches work into this whole thing? What if Roos leeches to remove the bad blood from his body? If he doesn't, the blood would pool, and he will have the blackness in his extremities like cold hands. Could his Hippocrats sometimes be blood, to replenish his blood supply and not look so pale? Is this why he's shown to rarely eat or eat in small amounts? His human half could need a little, but his other half requires blood. Or does this passage hint at another reason? In that darkness, the others came for the first time. They were cold things, dead things, that hated iron and fire and the touch of sun, and every creature with hot blood in its veins. What if Roos purges himself of his blood because he hates his emotional half-human side? He leeches to get rid of the pain and rage, the bad blood inside him. He's becoming closer to his other side when he leeches. On a side note, there is a medical use for leeches. For people undergoing skin grafts, leeches have been used to help with blood flow and keeping the skin healthy and attached. So in essence, Roos is the child of the Night's King and the other woman, is immortal because of his half-other blood, and face swaps with his children to avoid people noticing he doesn't age. He then lives for 40-ish years in one body before switching again, a technique he could have learned through Flayne or the Faceless Men. And next up on his body jumping list? Ramsay. Things against this theory. A lot of what Roos does or is like can be explained. Roos might actually be mortal and think he won't live long enough to see another heir reach maturity. Since we don't know Roos's exact age, and he was ruling around the time of Ned Stark's father, Rickard Stark, Roos could be in his late 40s or 50s and legitimately know his time is running out. Why did Roos treat Ramsay so terribly if he planned on taking over his life at one point? Because he was hoping and praying for another child to groom and when that never came he decided on Ramsay? For a man that's been around for centuries, it seems odd that Roos wouldn't keep Ramsay closer and groom him just in case. Yeah, he gave Ramsay's mom money and animals every year, but that was to keep her quiet. Roos has to know switching bodies with Ramsay, a guy pretty hated in the North, isn't a good idea. Does he really think people will follow him and Ramsay's body after the things Ramsay has done? 
A guy that's been alive that long has to know how to play the game better than that. Does the Bolton's flaying have to do with supernatural ability? Is it more likely they did it to be intimidating and strike fear into the hearts of others? Also, House Bolton doesn't need a half-other patriarch to survive all those conflicts with the Starks. Is it more reasonable to think the Bolton survived all those battles with the Starks because of something Tywin said? When your enemies defy, you must serve them steel and fire. When they go to their knees, however, you must help them back to their feet. Elsewise, no man will ever bend the knee to you. Did the Starks practice this in continuously forgiving the Boltons? Roos's features could honestly just be a unique trait to his family. Roos in general has a bit of an odd appearance. Also, him lacking passion and being cold could be that Roos is just a psychopath. Lastly, I want to say that there is a theory similar to this that Roos isn't a half-other, but is actually a vampire-like creature. It cites basically all the same evidence sans the Night's King bet. There is also a similar theory that Roos has been trying to become immortal, and that's why he associates with Kyburn and isn't concerned about an heir. What do you think? Roos is the child of the other woman and the Night's King, or simply a complex character that shows sometimes the most evil things in this world aren't others, aren't dead creatures, wargs, or any other creature. Sometimes the most terrifying evil things are people. If you really think Roos is evil. New Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire videos twice a week, typically Sunday and Wednesday. House Mormont is coming up.